January 9th, 2023, select board meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Good evening. Welcome to the select board meeting for the town of Southwick for Monday, January 9th, 2023. Uh, those present, myself, Russell S. Fox as chairman, vice chairman, Doug Moglin, Jason Perrone, uh, administrative assistant, Robin Solak. Uh, I'd like to begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, we have a member of our regional school committee here, Pat Judd, if you could uh, start us off, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pat. Before we go to public comments and uh, we're not starting off the new year very well. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, three people uh, who passed away, unfortunately. Uh, the first being Cal Chungalo, a former resident of the town of Southwick, uh, who when he retired, moved out of state. He's a former planning board member, former member of the capital expenditures committee, we also have longtime resident, local businessman, and former water commissioner, Warren Baker Sr., who passed away the past couple of days. And uh, I was just notified this afternoon of the passing of one of our Gold Star mothers, Marie Alamid, at the age of 98. Uh, Marie uh, was at every single veterans or Memorial Day till, till she physically couldn't, and that was just, I think, this year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very active in our uh, auxiliary at the American Legion. So if we could please have a moment of silence for those three people. Thank you. Uh, now, public comments. This gives anyone that's not on the agenda that would like to make a statement to the select board. This is your opportunity. I ask if anybody that's here in the room that wants to speak, if they'd please... Uh, uh, state their name and address, and then we'll go to people on Zoom. I see a hand up, Pat Jeff. Uh, Patrick Job, 34 Deer Run, South Lake. Uh, this is in regards to placing up speed limit signs in the neighborhood of and around Deer Run, Pine Hall, Lexington Circle, Warren Lane, Coyote Glen, Morningside Drive, Waverly Lane, Partridge Lane, and Patriots Way development. Uh, I included packets for the three. Dear fellow members of the select board, I'm writing to you all with my concern and safety hazards that has been an ongoing problem since I built my home in 2004. As a concerned citizen, father of three, and one who works in the field where safety is of the utmost importance, I feel this proposal to place 25 mile per hour speed limit signs in the aforementioned neighbor, neighboring intersecting streets is long overdue. With the amount of people out walking, jogging, biking, et cetera, there's a large amount of human to vehicle potential on a daily basis. Add delivery trucks, landscapers, and street parking where the area becomes quite narrow at times. This poses a huge threat for those on foot or bike. So I included a street view and an aerial map of the proposed signage areas in which I'm requesting a study investigation and consideration for speed limit signs. Slow children signs, children at play, any signs, you know, that stay densely populated or any signs that warn drivers to slow down. From the map view, you can clearly see there's a potential to gain momentum on several areas throughout the neighborhood, thus increasing the actual speed significantly. After speaking with multiple neighbors who have speed concerns and have experienced some sort of near miss, I am coming to you all with the hope some, with some sort of awareness posting or place to create a reminder that this is a densely populated neighborhood with many potentials of injury. What I did include is we have over 170 houses in that area and um, any help that you could do is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Pat. Robin, I'm going to give you my thing so that you can have that forward to the chief of police. All right. Is there anyone else under public comments? All right. I see no more hands in the room. Is there anybody under public comments on Zoom? <clears throat> any? No, sir. No, sir. All right. Then we are going to our meeting. I'm going to try to knock off a few things before we have a, a uh, Verizon poll hearing. For clarification, 
The legal notice was the hearing to take place at 6.05 p.m. The agenda is in error saying 6.15. It's a typo. So we will be conducting the hearing because we're legally supposed to at 6.05 p.m. Um, but let me just take care of a few things first, hopefully in case there's anyone else that wants to join us. Uh, acknowledge payroll warrant number 2316 dated 1323 in the amount of $260,355.45. I need a motion to accept the open minute open session minutes dated 12-19-2022 and 1-3-2023. Doug Moglin, so moved. Jason Perone seconded. Roll call vote, Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Perone, aye. Okay, I need a motion to accept the executive session minutes dated 12-19-2022 and 1-3-2023. Doug Moglin, so moved. Okay. Uh, and if we could pass the seconded. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sec. Uh, roll call vote, Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Perron, aye. Okay, if we can pass those back. <clears throat> okay. All right, then we are going to go to the public hearing. I will read the notice. Public hearing, select board, January 9th, 2023. Notice is hereby given pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 166, Section 22 and 22A, that Cello, Cells, Cellco Partnership, DBA Verizon Wireless, has submitted a petition to install a small cell wireless antenna with fixtures on a Wimico pole number 164, located at 567 College Highway in South Massachusetts. Equipment includes antenna, equipment, ads, wires, cables, meter, fiber, DMARC box on the pole. Interested parties should attend the select board hearing at town hall at 6.05 p.m. on January 9th, 2023, to hear from the applicant or submit written testimony on the matter. Zoom meeting details will be posted on the town webpage at www.southwickmass.org, public meetings and agendas. The petition and plans can be reviewed at the town clerk's office and online at www.southwickmass.org slash home slash pages slash town documents. Select board, town of Southwick, Massachusetts. All, all the appropriate people were notified by mail, the abutters. Yes, that's correct. The town actually did the mail Okay. So, and the correct time was given, 6.05 p.m. Okay. All right. With that, I need a motion to open the hearing. Doug Moglin, so moved. Jason Perone, second. Uh, roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Perone, aye. Okay. We're going to hear from the applicant, and they have submitted documentation. And I'm sorry, if you could just state your name and address for the record. Of course. My name is Paula Foley. I am a network consultant with Verizon Wireless. My business address is 15 Chestnut Street in Worcester, Massachusetts. And with me is Kip DeVito. He is a radio frequency engineer with Verizon Wireless. And also on Zoom is Corey Vaccaro. He is the site acquisition specialist for this proposal. Thank you. So as you noted, we have proposed a attachment of a small wireless antenna to an existing utility pole in the public right of way at uh, the address 567 College Highway. This request is virtually the same as the request that we made last year, which the select board approved for a small cell to be located on Point Grove Road and on Sheep Pasture Road. The purpose of this proposal is to provide improved wireless capacity and coverage in this area of Southwick, where Horizons engineers have determined there is diminished service on its network. The equipment will consist of one small canister antenna mounted on the pole at a height of 28 feet with a remote radio unit and an electric meter below on the pole. There will not be any ground mounted equipment or any ground disturbance. 
So we respectfully request the select board approve this petition and we're happy to answer any questions the board or the public may have. Okay, I'm gonna start with the board first. If there's any questions, concerns, statements. This is substantially this, I'm sorry, Jason. Nope, nope. This is substantially the same exact thing we did on sheep pasture and um, point growth. And point growth. Yes, it right? is. Right, so those are the two locations we have so far, right? Yes, that's correct. The equipment is identical. Surprised they didn't go a little further up the hill, but I guess this is a, a, a download for you guys. Well, actually, there were a number of poles, utility poles that were examined. And this is the, the single pole that is capable of having this equipment attached to it. Gotcha. There is a, electrical equipment on a number of the poles in the area that render those poles unsuitable. Not those holiday lights. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it, didn't to... you? Were there more added, by the way? Yes, <laughs> finally fixed them. <laughs> All right, with that, we're gonna open this up to the public. And uh, rather than just say those are for, or those are against, I'm just gonna open it up in general. Is there anyone in this room? If you could please stand and state your name and address for the record. Please. Um, Eric Carroll, 569 College Highway. <clears throat> uh, for the record, my neighbors, Sue and Tom that are at 567 never received a letter. I forward them the copy of the letter and the link and whatnot. But um, I received it, my other neighbors received it also. Um, I just have a couple questions. The other locations that are in service right now, Point Grove and Sheep Pasture, are they in service or are they proposed to be in service? They are in service. If you could, oh, if you could there. speak up just a little louder so people on Zoom could hear. So they're uh, they are constructed. Yes. So one of them is constructed, but they are not in service. Okay. Not at this point. All right. <clears throat> okay. And uh, one concern I have is uh, the specifications of the transmitting power, uh, frequency range, power output. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's 24 seven power out, I'm, I'm assuming, but what is the power output? And what is the, I guess the uh, pattern of radiation? Does it go all over or does it, is it spread out? I mean, I know it's 360, but it's spread out or is it, does it go down? Because I'm just concerned about where it's located. My neighbor, Sue and Tom, I mean, they're like right there and their bedrooms are, I level with that can where that can's going to be. I'm a little lower, but still, I'm a little concerned. Yep. So, um, do you want me to introduce myself for this? Yeah, I, I would. Yes. My name is Chris Avito. I'm an RF engineer for Verizon Wireless. Uh, this is Bunny Alexander Drive and Walk. Um, this antenna is what we call, um, it has a peanut pattern. So, if you envision like how peanut looks, like here's the road. So, from here, it's going to be like kind of like a, a peanut. Up and down the road. So this antenna is designed to direct its pattern for the road and some of the surrounding buildings in the immediate area. Um, okay. So as far as power is concerned and safety of emissions, we are at a very low fraction of what is allowed by the FCC for um, emissions. It's in at like 12% of max permissible exposure limits. So very low. These small cells do not emit. Um, much of anything for and what is that number that it emits i mean it, it i don't have like an exact number there's, there's <clears> power <throat> output by the top by the radio but then that's affected by cabling diplexers and Correct. the antenna so right. i don't have an exact number of the actual power output and it's not operating all the time it's operating only when a phone is you know, making a call or it's transmitting, it's not a hundred percent all time duty cycle. Okay. So it's it's a lot more comp complicated than right. just, you know, output power. It's not you know, that it's right. Okay, but it's not omnidirectional, it's it's, it's, it's not a peanut shape. Right. I and mean, we have, you know, omnidirectional antennas this one just mm -hmm. not to be right. for this this location. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we deployed thousands, if not 
hundreds of thousands all over the country of small cells that are very embedded in our nation, not just us, but the mobile, the other areas. Are and they are very low powered. They're not yeah. the same type of antennas you can see on a rooftop or a right. tower. Very low power. All right. And you don't know what that power is. I mean, the, the per transmitter is 40 watts. 40. Okay. In the All right. Well, that gives me a range. So, okay. Yeah, there's, it's, there's a lot of things that go into a radio itself right. has a composite power of 320 watts, but then it's broken up into transmitters mm -hmm. and then broken up into carriers and stuff. And then you have cabling and diplexes to it, and you start with losses there and you gain a new antenna. So, so, right. Okay. Um, yeah, <clears throat> that's just my concern. I mean, uh, one, uh, 40 watts is not really a lot of power, but it is, but the radiation pattern of, of the antenna, if you're saying what it is, um, I feel a little more comfortable around it because it's not pointing, it's not a full omni circular, mm -hmm. it's spread out to follow the road. Yeah. So, the point of this small cell is that road there, that section of road there, it falls in the null of two other macros. So you have these two other macros that are macros of the towers. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have these sectors where the antennas are pointing and in between those is what we would call a null where you're just like outside of the main RF pattern there. Right. This sector of road falls in that null. So like if you're shining two flashlights, mm -hmm. you get a sort of like shadow between <laughs> Okay. All right. And um, all right. I think that's <laughs> all I have. Uh, I think. Uh, yes. I you know I believe that that was it. My other question was already answered. Is uh, where are the other if there are any other locations that I could like look at just to look at what? Okay. Oh, she. Uh, I think I'm all, I'm all set. And point goal. Yeah. If you go to the eighty-two point goal. Eighty-two road. point. Yeah. yeah. That's right there. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Charles Dunlap, Emergency Management Director, Town of Southwick, located 66 Lining Hill Road, home residence. I'm also a commercial FCC general class licensed engineer. Uh, I'd like the speci uh, specifics on the frequency. You answered a lot of the questions that I had, but what is the actual frequency range? Yeah. So there's, well, we're in the 700 megahertz. Okay. The 850, um, AWS, which is 2100, mm -hmm. and then TCS, which is 1900. And uh, I believe this one will have CBRS, which is, uh, I don't want to say like 3400. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering about interference with public safety communications and local broadcast communications or uh, mixing of the frequencies that are located in the residence or if you're driving by with a uh, vehicle radio, whether it be public safety or uh, uh, AM, FM broadcast or what have you, we are ex going to experience any interference driving down through that area. So because you're, you're multiple frequencies, mm -hmm. there'll be multiple mixing. Yep, so we have licenses, FCC licenses that we are given. So we are only allowed to operate in those frequencies not outside of this so we have filters in our equipment that make sure of that usually what happens a lot of times is we get outside interference from other pieces of equipment that are transmitting yeah it's a tool so it's tool extreme. it's we are yeah you know we get this all the time it's, mm -hmm. it's something we have to adhere to by our licenses i mean we have to stick with that and if there is for some reason any kind of interference and we could find, figure out that it's us, you know, we work to get it resolved. That's what I've heard that many times before, but I'll, I'll just end it. I'm happy and glad it's not in front of my house because under OSHA, I would not want to have radi extra radiation generated in my area. But thank you very much. All right. Is there any other comments in the room? Is there anyone on Zoom? That would like to make any statement or question or ask any question. I don't see an answer. Okay. Ben, you gentlemen got all your answers. Okay. Then I'm going to ask for a do motion. You a, uh, do you need a clarification? Oh, yeah. What was the name of your neighbors that did not get 
Um, uh, Sue Kelly and Tom don't know his last. He has a different last name. They're five, six, seven. Their house is smack right. I mean, the 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 telephone pole, the utility pole is right up against their mailbox. Yeah, because I see Herbalies are right there. They got it. Um, JD's got it. Auto. Uh, um, you know, on the other list. Just. Thomas and Susan. Thomas and Susan Kelly are here. Tom. Susan Kelly and Thomas Miller. Yes, here we go. Tom Miller. Um, I reached out to them. They didn't get a notice, but I sent them a photograph okay. of my notice, and I also sent them the link to the documentation on the, uh, the Southwick Town of Southwick website, so they could look at the plans. Yeah. I don't understand why they didn't get it, but. Um, but there are some LLCs here, so I don't I don't know. So, <clears throat> but at least you you did notify them. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my neighbor next to me, uh, Sandra Organowski, uh, she received the notice. She's yeah. the one that reached out to me first. She's on it, correct? Yeah. So she she got it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because it looks like everybody in that area. Got the notification, but but we will double check on that uh, to make sure that doesn't happen in the future. Okay, I'm going to accept the motion to close the hearing. Doug Moglin, so moved. Jason Paul, second. Roll call vote. Russ five aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Paul, aye. Okay, hearing is closed. Uh, is there anyone that would like to make a motion to approve or disapprove at this time? Make a motion to approve. Got a motion. You need a second. Second to motion. Okay. Roll call vote. Russ five aye. Doug Mogan aye. Jason Paul aye. All right. We thank you as usual, um, and I thank uh, Charlie and thank you, for you guys because every time I get a better education of this, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and learn more each time. All right. We thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right, we're going on to the rest of our agenda. Uh, the first thing that I have is a fiscal 20 invoice from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. This is uh, our community block grant program. This is for uh, uh, North Lake uh, Avenue Engineering and Design, Housing Rehabilitation, our Community Food Pantry and Administration in the amount of $549 and 23 cents. I need a motion. Doug Moglin, so moved. Jason Perron, second. Roll call vote, Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Perron, aye. Okay, uh, let's, I'll, I'll go on to the next one. It's for fiscal 21 invoice, again, from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. This is part of our community block grant. And this is for phase one construction of Bungalow Street, housing rehabilitation program, our community folk, our community food pantry administration in the amount of $4,994.84. I need a motion. Doug Mulvin, so moved. Jason Perron, second. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mulvin, aye. Jason Perron, aye. Okay, we're going to sign these. Must say, I'm doing a fair job of writing 2023 versus I, I the first week of January. I haven't made the mistake I yet. Made, but I don't know. But I'm gonna, I, I, no, I probably I'm, just doomed myself. We're jinxed like now <laughs> because we mentioned it. We're jinxed. <laughs> Goes back to Robin so she doesn't yell at us. Okay. Next thing is under new business. Uh, the only thing I have under new business is I've been in conversation with uh, Jean Thoreau, uh, who's our, on our cemetery commission and our uh, also a uh, Dickinson School trustee, uh, but he's a very active veteran. And uh, he has reached out to me concerning a veterans tax program, similar to what we have for our senior citizens tax program. Uh, basically our senior citizens tax program 
10 individuals could apply, you know, it's based on income and they could uh, work off some of their tax. Like Westfield's program. With right, the, right. The and the other stuff. Right. So uh, uh, I, I think it's, it's certainly something that uh, is worth looking into. Uh, it certainly would require a town meeting vote. So if, if the board doesn't have any problems, I'd like to begin the process of looking at it, see what other communities are doing and see if we can't recommend some sort of program at uh, annual town meeting. No objection. No Not objection. A good idea. As a veteran, okay. I support that 100%. Okay, then I'd ask that that be add to old business. Okay, uh, I believe that's the only thing that I have under new business. Mr. Moglin, new business? Uh, the only thing I have is um, today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. So. Thank you to all our uh, officers and staff that uh, work for the South of Police Department and to you, Mr. Perron. Thank you, Mr. Mulder. All right, new business. This new business, uh, this actually kind of covers the new and one of the old things I was dealing with regards to the power. It, um, the question that the Cindy Lamarill had in regards to towns being able to negotiate power rates. Uh, Mr. Mulder steered me to, in the right direction. Um, it's called the Municipal Aggregation Program. What it does is it allows, um, basically it uh, will allow the town to, not to more or less to negotiate with an individual company. Um, it allows us to um, work with them to lock in a rate. Um, yeah. What I'd like to do is I'd like to actually have Mr. Capendero, um, I'd like to have, have it added to the agenda at some point to have him come in and explain this program in much more in depth. It's actually something people can do now. They can reach out to um, these different companies and they can search for their rates. What this does is it allows the town, if the town, and this is something that actually would go as a, they do through the town meeting as well. Um, they actually presented me with all the paperwork that other committees uh, have used. And basically that we would just go in front of the town board meeting uh, if we decided to look into it and present it to the residents and it would allow us to contract with a company that would lock lock in our rates for anywhere between a one and three year period of time. I, I think anything that can save us money is something that we should look at, uh, whether it be for the residents or the businesses or the town. And this one actually allows all of us to get together to uh, negotiate a better rate. So I'd actually like to have this looked at. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at looking at anything. Yep. And, uh, I know with my company, we've locked in a rate for three years and knock on wood, I'm glad we did <laughs> yeah. before before that rate increase. Uh, so uh, it is something that people are doing yep. now. Yep. And businesses are and doing it. it's an opt-in, opt-out thing. You do not have to do it. Right. Uh, as you know, if you're, if you're doing it with your, your business, residents who didn't want to be involved in this can opt right out. And otherwise, they they're added and they, they, the buying power is increased by however many residents or businesses are involved. Okay, and the, and the person that you wanted to come in, is he a, a, a particular business that offers He this? is the, uh, the, the, it's the group that um, Mr. Moglin steered me towards. Actually, what ended up happening is there's multiple ones. Um, it's called, his was Nextera with West Springfield. This is where they were negotiating with. They had a three-year contract. I spoke with the central maintenance de department over there and their contract ran out they started with this this new company colonial power group this year that's who i spoke to um i would do the research to see you know if, if this is something that you shop around to different groups or if you just you know that part i, I wouldn't be sure of but yeah. it, it, like this on top of it, it just lets the residents know that there's options for them yeah i'm and i'm gonna just throw this out there our energy uh, consultant that is advising us on solar, things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think this would come under her purview too? Potentially. I think they do have, uh, there's different credits that are built into the program yeah. that allows for more green renewable energy. Yeah. And well, this, this, our consultant on that, you know, isn't basically an energy expert, you know? So I'm wondering if uh, um, we might reach out to her to, uh, to get some feedback, that would be good. you know, in her experience, you know, especially an impartial party. Right, right. 
They might even say if they it, like it, go here. Right, and she, she might not even handle this end mm -hmm. of it. I'm not sure. But, uh, I mean, we she is our consultant, so yes, why, not, why not use it? Her? As of right now, I just did an assessment that it would save local residents today, if we were in the program, about five cents a kilowatt hour. Right. You want to add it to old business, and uh, we'll check and see uh, if our energy consultant actually uh, could advise us on that. You know? Um, you want to kind of spearhead this Absolutely. thing? Okay. All right. Jason's going to spearhead it. We'll place it under old business and so that we can keep it uh, in front of us because it's going to get hectic the next few weeks uh, mm -hmm. when we start meeting with different departments and head into the budget season. All right. So we've covered new business, old business. Um, I think you were all here when I asked the chief of police to set up a meeting uh, concerning North Pond. Uh, so that we can uh, make sure that we're prepared for springtime uh, and address any of the current issues that uh, are, are being uh, faced there. Uh, we still have not met with the uh, good mayor of the city of Westfield on the sewer MN IMA, but uh, hopefully we'll be doing that uh, I'm hoping things are going to uh, kind of get back to normal in the next couple of weeks and, and that we can uh, uh, start working on that again. Uh, we've had people out uh, and uh, I think that's going in the right direction. Uh, Mr. Moglin did a good job uh, working with the town clerk. Uh, so that we have our survey on the marijuana. Jumping on that. Okay. Um, and, um, 44 responses online so far. And I, as of Friday, the census hasn't gone out yet. Okay. So hopefully, because I think the census going out is going to be the big number, you know, oh, yeah. and, you know, uh, that's where we know exactly who's, who's responding and, uh, uh, that'll be good. And I'm, I'm not, not saying we're going to share that information on who responded and how they did. I'm just well, saying the, that I believe it's a separate sheet with something from the fire. So it won't be tied to your census. Right. If you send it back, they'll split it. Right. And then we'll look at it. Right. I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> so okay. Not a problem. All right. The marijuana host agreement, Hudson drive that's between the attorneys. So, you know, that's really out of our, our, uh, court at this time. Uh, I think I told you we had informal discussions, the CAO and I, on the other uh, marijuana growth facility. That is, uh, it, it looks like it's going to be taking over by uh, new uh, uh, new people. Um, the opening of the housing authority, we posted that, correct, Robin? On the web, yes. On the web. And any, any uh, action? No action. Okay. So that's something we want to get out there. Uh, we've added the speed limits on the deer run area, greater deer run area. And we've also added uh, the health director, the equal eye testing and reporting. And we do have a new health director. Uh, that's uh, got the email this morning that uh, we're, we're, that has been finalized. So we will be working with the new person. So I think we're heading in the right direction. With that, old business, Mr. Moglin. Uh, just following up on the speed limits that was brought up in public comments, was brought up last week, and we're carrying it under old business. There was legislation passed by the legislature, signed by Charlie Baker on his way out the door to change the process by which uh, towns can uh, change speed limits within areas that are not state numbered route or state highways. And it also changed the process for state highways. But for this discussion here, um, it simplifies the process a little bit. And I did send that information to uh, the chief and the lieutenant to review. Okay. I believe the lieutenant is our safety officer, correct? He's not. He's not. I don't think he is. I believe he said he was, but he's not. Okay. He's, we're we're going we're gonna to find out. Hey, lieutenant, the... are you the safety officer? I think he's just pretending to be. Oh, there he yeah, is. Yeah, sorry. I just had to walk out of the room. I was in a little bit loud. Uh, no, I'm not. That's actually Sergeant Miles now. Sergeant okay. Miles. Okay. But I, I, had, I had emailed the chief and the lieutenant the information that they could forward to the safety officer about that. Okay. Thank you, lieutenant. No problem. All right. So, uh, but as I said prior to the meeting, the good governor signing that, I think this is a, a great time to approach mass DOT about the speed limit on College Highway South. 
I don't believe that we've asked them numerous times to review that. I don't fit, think 50 miles an hour is the appropriate speed limit for that area. Uh, you know, uh, we've had development going on down there. We might have a new growth facility going on down there. We've got new houses going in on down there. It, it's certainly not safe for people on bicycles or walking. Uh, there is no really edge uh, or no, yeah. right. Uh, we did have that young man who got hit not quite that far down, but uh, did get hit at nighttime skateboarding. So I think uh, I'd, I'd like to see the board uh, at some point. Uh, petition uh, mass DLT uh, under this new uh, regulation. Jason, old business. Other than uh, the tax information that I've, I've been looking into, and I'm going to look into reaching out to Sue Gore, Mr. Hoyt, and have them put it on the agenda at some point. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the best thing. I, I did uh, tell you yep. previously uh, that I reached out to Roy Bishop, the consultant. He's on vacation in Florida. Uh, he suggested that you meet uh, with the Board of Assessors. He felt that they would be able to handle most of the questions and he would be willing to follow up, uh, you know, with any question that wasn't answered because he does handle all the, the commercial end. Perfect. Okay. So with that, any other comments? New business, no. old business? No, all right. New for me. I don't see any need to have an executive session tonight. So with that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Doug Moglin, so moved. Jason Perone, seconded. Roll call vote, Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Jason Perone, aye. All right, thank you, everybody. We will not be meeting next week. It is a uh, holiday. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be back, uh, let's see, January 23rd. Just look on the wall. I'm sitting there trying to figure it out. Okay, thank you thank and you. good night. Have a good night.